Uh, let's talk about the game. Um, I think I I have been I have been like wrestling where to put this in the the James Franklin pantheon of wins of most importance in Penn State football history, and I keep coming up with two to three. Like I I, I think it's it it Ohio State's always going to be one. I think maybe Big Ten championship is two ish, and then I I really think we're gonna maybe look back on this win and think three. Uh, for right now, at least we're looking at this win as three. And I, 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 I know that feels like an exaggeration. I know that feels like a recency bias. But I, I just think, how many times have we watched Penn State football go through every emotion experience that USC fans, USC players, USC coaching staff um, were going through the second that um, Penn State won that game? I, I like There was a shot, CBS got a great shot of, of Lincoln Riley just like right the second the field goal went through and just like he looks dejected and sad and, and but it's not in a we just lost the game it's a I need to figure out my program situation and it was like ah I've been there and I know what that exact feeling looks like as a fan at least and it it just was it was felt like a great reprieve to come off on the other side of one of those games and not be in that those shoes again and I I don't know. I, I think there's so many different aspects of the game that I wanted to get to. And that was part of the reason why I wanted to slide it up. Cause I, I again, not just trying to invert a pyramid and everything, but I, I just think there was a lot there. Um, what was your immediate takeaway? I was, as we were watching it, I wasn't in a position to, to look at if you're on ESPN, right? They do the, 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 the chance to win throughout the game, right? The percentage thing. This would have been one of those ones, right? Where it went from, 90 something against to 90 plus four. It's a fun game. And, and I, it was a fun game and, and maybe even more fun for me because I don't feel as invested as you sometimes. Like, I mean, just I, I feel like I'm a little less fanny about yeah. some stuff. You're curmudgeon. Uh, right? Yes, I'm a curmudgeon, right? It's not about, it's about you. It's about me being a curmudgeon, right? But I'm like, this is pretty. Who, who would that happen? And that happened now too? And, and they're going to try to do this. Oh, and they did, right? So, I mean, and you have, you know, the individual stuff. Forget, forget the Tyler Warren, Warren stuff, which you can't forget. But you know, it's just, you know, dropped passes, and then they figured out how to catch passes. <laughs> it was a fun game, and and I think it is probably top five for sure. Although I liked how you said for now, because God forbid they spit the bit in a week or so, and then you're like, here you go again. But now they've given themselves some clearance to have one bad one because they're clearly in great shape for the college football playoff, even if one thing goes wrong. So yeah, big win, big fun win. I think let's start there. Cause I think that's my biggest, my other biggest takeaway from this. Uh, I think in a lot of ways, this changes so many dynamics of the season uh, for Penn State football. And I think also maybe something with the result in, in Eugene also probably has something to do with that. And, and I agree with you, like they do need to take care of business. Um, in Wisconsin, and and, and I, I think, uh, not to tease one of our future interviews, but but we had a guest on who kind of was like, Penn State takes care of the, the, the games that they're supposed to take care of. To me, that Wisconsin game is a game that they're supposed to take care of. Now, and then, then, then they go to the Ohio State game, all of the pressure is off Penn State, and all of the pressure is now on Ohio State. Mm-hmm. When has that happened in, in the, that, that didn't even happen in 2016, when, when Penn State beat Ohio State. Like, it, it, I just think this team now knows that they can come back from, I wouldn't say the dead, but pretty darn close to it. They know that they have guys that they can reliably depend on, uh, whether it's throughout the co- entire course of the game in the shape of the quarterback or the tight end, or in many microcosms of Julian Fleming or even Ryan Barker making big kicks. Like That's what I think, why I think in a lot of ways, it just... It, it felt very like it was just such a reprieve. And I think the other thing with like the Tyler Warren thing is like, he has arguably, I think at least under James Franklin, probably the second best individual effort game, the Iowa, the 2017 Iowa Saquon Barkley game is, is absurd. Like go look at that stat line. We were just talking about this relatively recently with Tyler Warren, in fact, but I, I, I like, I think, they have a true superstar there. And I, I, I think I'm probably going to write this this week. Like, I think it's warranted 
to take the like Heisman thing out of the meme phase and 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 at least put him in the conversation. I'm not saying give him the trophy, but I think he, he's one of the best players in in football right now, and I think that also comes into it. Um, I don't know if he has the second half of the season like he's had the first half of the season. It'd be hard for hard it's, to not argue that he right. doesn't deserve to be in New York for the award to discuss it at least. Right, it's like and uh, that's what I'm saying. Like it's 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 I don't know. I think. I think in so many ways that game was just a fascinating. It just it it felt like there was a little bit and and it seemed like it was pretty emotional after the game. There was the I haven't watched the Drew Aller interview, but it, uh, the James Franklin interview, he was kind of getting choked up on CBS, and then um, Ryan Barker's getting choked up. I know, saw there's a great Joe Hermit got a great picture of uh, Jalen um, Jalen Reed crying. Like it it was it. There was a lot of emotion, pent up emotion, and I think they they let some of that go. And I think the season, in some ways, only gets easier, even if the schedule gets harder, because they have confidence now. Yeah, they have confidence, and they have some room to play with. Yes, the schedule gets harder. I mean, because like as they had in the graphic before the, during the game, the 106th hardest schedule coming into the game. That's going to change because the teams in the back end of the schedule are better. But they could lose to Ohio State, and it doesn't matter, right? right. So that just not that they, that's the expectation in that locker room or whatever else, but it does. It's not the end of the world if that happens because they're right. going to be in a position to be like, oh, okay, so we're not going to get a bye. We're still in the we're still in the playoff, right? And I think that makes a big difference. So um, it, it just it just it was. I don't know that it was a cathartic game for those people involved, but it was just so entertaining from start to finish. Good and bad, right? Everybody got to go on the ride, you know. And I saw people social media like, oh, that was so stressful. That's what it's about. Yeah. Like, like nobody wants cakewalks, right? You, you want that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah. you can say you want cakewalks, but this is what makes college football fun. 